Let's break it. Holy mackerel, we're at part seven already. It's good to have you back. Thanks for dropping in again. As you can see, our radio is working. Needs a little tuning, probably. But... Anyway, she's still working. And we are going to cover today the first and second intermediate frequency transformers. The IF transformers, or what's often referred to as the IF cans. They're the aluminum square cans on top that you find on top of the radio chassis. Let me put this tube in a little bit here, it kind of got loose. On this radio, it would be this can right here, and it would be this can right here. And if we look up here on the schematic, let me zoom in here to help out a little bit. It's referred to as one L3 or inductor. That's what L stands for, inductor. Inductor three, and over here is inductor four. This L, this L3 and L4, that's the name of the cans, okay? And each of the coils is separate. This is a primary and secondary. Primary and secondary, this one would be a four, a three. Now this is important because when it comes time to align the radio, you got to know when they refer to A3 and A4 which one they're talking about. It'll be the can is inside. I mean, all this stuff is inside the can. This dotted line you see right here, that's the aluminum can. And this grounding point is where it's attached to the chassis. The ground on the chassis. On your uh, metal chassis, older, large wooden uh, radios, it's the same thing. Some of these cans are, are sitting isolated for some reason. I don't know. Others are, are right there grounded to the chassis. Most are grounded to the chassis, although I have seen some weird setups from time to time. Uh, same here. Okay, we have A2 and A1. So we get A1, 2, 3, and 4. And they're all adjustable. And it's adjustable down through the top of the can. Now most of you know have you know what these are and you you've messed with them and seen them and everything. But there again we're trying to talk to the folks who have not seen these and don't know what they are. The hole down through the top of the can or the IF transformer is that hole right there. And that hole right there on that one. Some of them have holes top and bottom and they need to be adjusted from the top and you have to go underneath and adjust them from a hole underneath the uh, circuit board or underneath the can or underneath the chassis if the can is sitting on a metal chassis. These holes, these particular holes on these cans by the way, they're, they're sealed off. So apparently what we have to do is adjust these things from the top. They adjust them all. I guess they all adjust with one slug. Now these things are notorious for uh, what they call SMD or silver mica disease, or silver migration. There's all kinds of little terms for them. We'll talk about that later, because when uh, down at the bottom of the can, down at the bottom, there's a, a capacitor set up down there that can screw up and do crazy things and cause the radios to make all kind of staticky, noisy stuff. It's called SMD, and I think these cans here are notorious for it, this particular design. Uh, most of them, in the uh, 1930s, you'll notice had the capacitors on top where you could adjust them with a screw on each one. Of course, on these, that's not the case. You have to put your little screwdriver down in there. It's got, most of them have a, a hexagon thing. You adjust it with, you see this, or this little pencil kind of looks like it. It would go down through in there and you would adjust it. Then you could go all the way down through to the bottom with it because they'd be hollow. You go all the way down through the first slug into the second slug and then adjust the second slug on the bottom, all from the very top. Others require you to, you know, like I said, take your little hexagon adjusting tool and stick it down through the hole in the bottom and adjust it depending on what the uh, alignment procedure tells you to do. And that's all I'm going to cover on that, that little, uh, you know, deal about alignment and, and construction and stuff like that. Lots of information on the internet, lots of information on YouTube. Tells you all about how to adjust these things, how to do alignment on these things. Later on, I'll go ahead and uh, detune one of them to uh, show you what effect it has. But right now, let's go back up here and see what we can figure out as to what's going on between this point right here. Remember, we've covered all the power supply, <coughs> covered it all, and we've covered up here the converter or the frequency changer tube, and we're now coming out here 
and going into the primary of the, of the uh, L3, which is the first intermediate frequency transformer. So let's take a little better look at that. All right, here we go. Once the converter or the frequency changer tube mixes the oscillator frequency with the incoming station frequency, in this particular case, in this particular radio, we get 455 kilocycles out. That is now called the intermediate frequency from this point on, okay? From this point on, it'll be IF. And it'll look exactly like the original carrier. And the original audio or amplitude modulated carrier, which is done by the guy's voice, the, you know, the amplitude on it. And it's just a different frequency in the center here. It's no longer 650 AM. It's now 455. All right. That's what the carrier frequency is. We're still talking about the carrier frequency, although now it's called the intermediate frequency. And again, once it comes out of here, it goes through here and it gets coupled across to the secondary on this transformer, just like any other transformer, couples of, you know, electrical signal, you know, changing frequency from one to the other. It brings it across and sends it into the control grid of the first IF amplifier. Now, why do we need this? Well, you know, it, the signal came in real small. If you'll remember way back when I showed you this, it comes in very, very tiny, and it needed to be beefed up. Well, it's still not quite big enough, and we went ahead and converted it to 455, the carrier frequency we're talking about. We're going to run it through these, the primary and secondary coil, and it needs to be amplified again. We need to get this signal up, 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 because if we don't get it up, 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 we're going to have lousy output on, on, the, uh, on the output tube, okay? So we're going to amplify it again. Now these two transformers do two things. It isolates the 90 volts from the uh, control grid of the first IF amplifier. We don't want 90 volts coming across here and slamming into this tube's control grid. What do we want in that control grid? We want negative voltage. Why negative voltage? Because that's what's on control grids. Remember I told you over here? Negative voltage here on the control grid. Negative voltage here on the control grid. Let's take a look at the other tubes and see what they get on their control grid. Oh, there it is. You know, let me see, we've got Negative voltage there again. Look at there. This one says negative 0.4, but as long as we get negative voltage again, we're okay. Then we come out all the way over here, and we don't have anything. We have zero volts. That's kind of interesting. We'll have to get to that later on. But at least there's no positive voltage. You follow what I'm getting here? It's negative all the way through. This transformer, uh, coupled over to this transformer, will only pass the 455 kilocycles. It will only pass the 455 kilocycles. Now there is a little bit of, you know, there is a little bit that kind of sneaks through here. Don't get me wrong, you know, nothing is perfect. A little bit of other frequencies will sneak through. It'll come over here and get to this tube. It'll be amplified out, you know, once again, it gets amplified out. The uh, plate comes across, goes in the primary of this transformer this intermediate frequency transform where it is filtered out again, you know, we tune it again, we tune out as much as we can tune out here, and this is where we pick up the little stragglers, you know, we get rid of the little stragglers right here. So, you know, the more of these you have, incidentally, the better you can tune this radio, the more closely to the frequency you're tuned to that you can make it. And it's done with the use of these, uh, these uh, slugs in, in here. So that's what we're gonna do right here. We're gonna stop right here, and I'm gonna read you a couple of things that uh, Brendan wrote. He said, now one of the reasons that a lower frequency like 455 kilocycles was chosen as the intermediate frequency. Remember, I've told you I've seen intermediate frequencies all kinds of, I think I had a, you know, I think way, way back when, they even something like, uh, it seems to me it was like 25, you know, way back when in the 20s or something like that, they had a 25 kilocycle intermediate frequency. There was, they were all over the board with those things and then finally they came up with 455. But you're going to run into all others. You're going to run into 265 like I did one time. You're going to run into 450, maybe 430. Who knows? But he says one of the reasons that a local, there that a lower frequency like 455 kilocycles was chosen was because it was easy to build a tube circuit that would amplify a signal in this range. Okay? It was easier to work with. Easier to work with. Keep in mind, it's an intermediate 
frequency. That's all I want you to know from here on out on, on this on this particular video. It's an intermediate frequency once it leaves here and goes into here and comes out. It's intermediate frequency. We're still talking about the carrier is intermediate frequency of 455 kilocycles. That's all you need to know. And one of the functions of this, two, two basic functions, it tunes so it only allows 455 kilocycles to go through and it also isolates the 90 volts coming off the plate from the control grid of the next tube. Isolates the 90 volts from the plate from the control grid of the next tube, or in this case the diode of the next tube, which is negative uh, point is negative voltage again, point point five. Okay, over here is point four, but we need negative voltage here and negative voltage there. Isolates, isolates, tunes and isolates, tunes and isolates, amplifies the first IF amp, self-explanatory. It amplifies it. We gotta get it up, up, up. Remember? Okay, what I'm gonna do now, I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible, but guess what? It's not gonna happen. <laughs> it never seems to happen. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the radio on or turn the radio up. We're gonna take a screwdriver here and we're gonna detune both both uh, these. I'm gonna detune one of them in this can and one of them in this can. Kind of give you an idea how we can tune it by ear. Or you can send a signal generator signal in and tune it, you know, that way also. So let's get that done. All right, let's go ahead and turn up the volume. All I'm going to do is detune both of these cans and put them back, you know, tune them back in. And that's going to be the end of the video. There's not much more we can cover on these cans here, on these intermediate frequency transformers. So let's go ahead and break it this way. And I will this this particular this transformer, by the way, these particular transformers have little screw heads in them. They're the slotted. Teams, although I've allowed myself to root for the Texans this year. Here we go. It's hard to watch when you're rooting for a team. It's more fun to See watch it? when you're just enjoying it. tuning sport. it away from the intermediate frequency. And so Crockett and Michael will come into my study. Let's cut it way down. Say, Let's take it back the other way. For? And we'll pick a team and we'll... It's louder. We'll root for them. I don't... I enjoy watching football. I'll watch Let's high school take this football. One. There I'll it goes again. College. It fades out. Pro. So you, you can kind of tune it. Look at that. It just about took it away there. You can just about tune these things by ear. These little AA5s. They work great. Now I'm not talking about the FM. The FM is another story. If you have a little AM FM radio, we're talking strictly AM here. Let's go ahead and make it louder. I... I forgot what I was going to tell you. Something about rooting for a team. <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> okay. Let's go up to the next one. Uh, you got to be real careful, by the way. These are carbon case. slugs. The thrill of and you don't want to break any of them, okay? I love to watch Let's go ahead and adjust this one and see what happens. Same thing. Down to the fourth quarter. Now, NBA basketball, you don't need to watch anything but the last two minutes because one team can be up by 20. It, it don't matter which one. It's see how it goes down. Just, see how it goes down? Like okay, NBA as you can tune really these things to, like to, to a carrier of 455,000 no cycles, 455 kilocycles. Well, I love to watch a close game. I do All right, not that'll be good enough. Fact. Okay, we got it all tuned in. Yeah, I think you guys get to kind of get the idea there, okay? Remember that some are tunable also, not only from the top, but from the bottom, and some of them have hollow holes you can go all the way down through with a plastic tuner. And the alignment procedure tells you everything you need to know. That's all I really need to cover here today. I don't know of anything else I can go over. Remember, it uh, tunes the intermediate frequency and it isolates the 90 volts or the, the DC voltage, the high DC voltage coming off the plates. It isolates it from the control grid of the, of the amplifier. And it isolates it from, in this case, from the uh, plate of the detector tube which you know this is I don't know where they come up with that name detector but we'll cover that next time I, I never did like the names of these you know, different like smoothing capacitors I like yet better than filter caps you know I like frequency changer better than I like converter and this tube over here in my mind should have been called you know maybe uh, I don't know maybe carrier eliminator Okay, because this is where the carrier is finally eliminated, so we get nothing but audio. Well, that's it until next time. If you have any questions, let me know. And, of course, I probably won't know the answer. I'll have to get with Brendan and drive him crazy. And uh, next time, I think I might even have a little, another little demonstration for you, which would be kind of nice. Anyway, I hope you learned something with this. I appreciate everybody hanging with me. 
once again I hope you're learning something you know the best thing I can get from uh, a person uh, when they watch the video is to say oh no I can't believe he's going over that crap again you know that means he's learned it that means the person has learned it I'm after the guy that says oh man I'm glad he's covering that again I didn't quite understand last time I'm glad he's going over it again that's the person we're looking for okay anyway this time I'm gonna say from me and Brendan both we'll see you next time thanks for being here this is John.